What's up guys, Flo here. So Liquid is one of the EU teams that made it to the Masters in Iceland, Reykjavik, but didn't actually get to Berlin. So namely, this came from the best of three that they end up playing Gambit, Gambit being the one that I believe came out top seed in, e yeah, in the EMEA region. So let's take a look at what exactly went wrong. We're not going to take a look at the first map uh, because that was a Team Liquid win. I believe it was a very close, uh, it was a very close split map, 13-11. Um, but on this one, it is going to be kind of a dominant showing for Gambit. And then we'll be taking a look at the uh, Icebox match after. Um, and then we'll kind of be, I'll be kind of voicing my thoughts on mid-round. Now, I'll start by prefacing. I'm not a pro. Don't claim to be. These are strictly my thoughts and how I think things should have been done or could have been done that might have gotten Liquid into Berlin and or specifically won them this map, therefore helping them get to Berlin. This, I really like this wall. So you're going to notice here is that this wall that you see that them using uh, between triple and bench allows them to set up a crossfire funneling players in between truck. Now, realistically, Gambit should be breaking this wall. Um, the one that Scream is behind right here. Yeah, yeah, this crossfire is insane. And then Nats is on the flank. Okay, that was a that was a really solid round from Team Liquid. Ideally, if if they had broken the wall, which is kind of understandably annoying to do, especially on pistol round, because it takes the sheer amount of bullets that takes to break the wall, they would realistically have to knife it. Um, then that round becomes a lot more serious. Scream has to focus on two angles, both the triple angle and this angle that he's shooting at. So I think that's kind of where Gambit went wrong. Uh, they also didn't really wait for Nats to flank. This The timing is off. You see all the players are dead on sight before Nats' flank even comes in. Normally you try to time it so that the players alive on sight are dragging as much attention as possible. I don't think Soulcast actually ended up peeking. Let me go back and also... I think Soulcast actually falls off from the elbow angle. Yeah, he doesn't even peek. If you look at the top left, he doesn't peek. He just instantly falls back there. I don't think that's the right play because in, in the... Man, it works out because Cryptics and Scream are both holding this. If this wall was broken right here, this might have given the Gambit a lot better of an angle. This is such a bad angle for Gambit. They have this tiny little choke point to push through, and it's really like not that great to take the fight. If this is open, you see how three players could be shooting Scream. It is just one. That's honestly kind of a little unlucky. And then at that point, they have no time. See, the thing is, they could actually still win this round if they had decided to go a little bit earlier. I think they were waiting for Soulcast to make noise here. So, th it's like, they have 40 seconds here. They trigger it. So, so uh, Shados knows that they're short A. Soulcast is just kind of chilling here. I'm not quite sure why. Because they ran a default in the original, in the beginning. So, it doesn't... It's not like they would have gotten an early flank. And it doesn't look like Soulcast is really making any noise. He keeps the two players on site, which is already kind of the job. But it's kind of late. And they, they're hitting the site with 15 seconds, and they can't really do anything. And then, like, yeah, even... Okay, so if imagine this fight. Like, even if it goes this poorly, like, Shadows gets two there. If this fight happens 10 seconds earlier... And there's 15 seconds of the clock, they commit, they have a 1v1 with uh, the Sova on site, and they probably... St there's still a solid chance they win this round. Because there's no time on the clock anymore, um, there's no point. Yeah, Chronicle wins, so this still... This, I am... That's questionable. I don't understand what the thought process is behind pushing into a jet smoke when you know the jet has knives. The scariest part on jet knives isn't even the left click, it's the right click. The fact that if in point blank, you are instantly going to die. That's pretty much it. It's like a better judge, essentially. Right? And he, they can chain up right clicks really fast. This is why he got a double kill so fast. So I don't know what Soulcast's idea was that he felt the need to push through the smoke. It also doesn't really allow Link to try. Like, if you have Defo push out to try to kill Soulcast, even if Soulcast goes out... Um, because he's outside of his own jet smoke, he chances are he gets traded there. But in this case, I don't, I don't really know what the thought process behind that is. They have you. Okay, we're going. We're going to go back and we're going to look. They have U-Haul control. This lack of U-Haul control is what ends up losing Liquid this round, right? Cryptix gets this kill. It's a three-on-two situation. They need to find a way to play off of Cryptix so he doesn't just get killed for free. They both leave U-Haul. Realist, I I think Link stays. Link stays, holds U-Haul. Soulcast comes out, can play the pocket area, can watch the cross 
um, that Chronicle is going to take here. Right there, right there. If he was back here, he could watch the cross so that Chronicle can't kill Cryptics for free. And Cryptics can play wider this way. Um, because Cryptics doesn't know where, how far this guy is out. So that's why he has to tuck himself into the corner. If he knew, then he would, could play out farther and he could actually be able to swing. He plays at this corner. Um, Soulcast plays here. Soulcast makes contact. Cryptic swings. It's a trade at best. Uh, at worst, it's a trade at best. It's a, you know, it's a... That no one Soulcast didn't die. Soulcast just did caps Chronicle. But they gave up U-Haul control. That's why you see Link here is just staring at it, and essentially being kind of not not, not being useful. It's unfortunate, but yeah, that that's kind of how it plays out. And then they're now they're playing from an optimized position. It's actually because there's a lack of coordination between the push. So the the um the rays and the jet come out pretty fast on time, essentially together. Yeah, Yampi and Soulcast, the double satchels work. Yampi gets taken down. Soulcast actually makes it into the jet smoke on top site. You're going to look at this entire time. No one's coming out. I feel like they're they're spending time trying to spam Nats. Yeah, instead of coming out site, they're just sitting inside, which allows Nats to get traded. It's like th This is the difference with seconds. It's not that... This was necessarily a bad push, but at the professional level, like there's, like, you guys have, to, I feel like they have to just kind of commit. Um, they're kind of banking on the players reaching site to not die. But I mean, Gambit honestly hit some crazy shots. Red guard getting the site one and the long one with the guardian is, they were pretty, uh, they were nice shots. And then Nats also stopping the judge. And then because Nats lost pressure after he killed the, uh, after he killed Yempi, no one kind of really challenged him. We're going to take a look at how this wall wins them the round. Scream loses, dies, loses elbow control. Both of these players are in no position to hold elbow. Right? Ideally, it would be Soulcast here um, watching elbow from Hookah. But Hookah gets walled off. So now these two players, site players, are kind of in a really crappy position. They kind of need to take a fight. Because the longer the fight plays out, the round plays out, the long more time there is for uh, Redgar to flank through elbow and kill the site players. And Soulcast here is forced to run through, run all the way around. He could jump out, but the idea is this is super risky. There's no smoke CT, jumping out can get you killed from CT, and there's there's someone elbow. Jumping out gets you killed elbow. So realistically, there's nothing much he can do here. He was forced to kind of run back. Yeah, this is kind of a bad Yeah, round. that round kind of comes out to Scream dying. Scream, I, I would say that Scream normally kills, gets those shots, but that death adds up to more than you think, right? Yeah, it's an eco round. But, like, that death, if it didn't happen, just him existing somewhere, like if he played Garden or something like that, is different. It changes the round because now the two players on site can play slightly differently. Uh, the two players in two to play slightly differently. They don't feel the pressure. They don't feel the need to swing. And Soulcast has the time to fully rotate around. Scream might actually get the kill. If they ever get the kill on Red Guard later, then that alleviates the pressure and Soulcast can um, play hookah longer. The funny thing is this round is kind of... There's a, there's a big chance that this round is lost by Scream Slow Orb. So this orb, the slow that... This scream throws is normally to sh cut off any teammates helping the back Kuka, so you can clear one side at a time. But this slow stops Team Liquid from being able to push and allows Shados to to uh, and uh, to come, rotate in. So let's let's pretend from the moment Red Guard dies, right? Red Guard dies. We're gonna count one, two, three. He hops on the box. Four satchels into sight. Five, six. He's on site. He's gonna beat Shados onto site. He even probably beats this ult, and his teammates come through. But look what happens. They have to wait. Yeah, they have to wait, and then that way it allows two more players to be on site before Nats even falls. Uh, it's it's an it's a combination of a being unlucky. I think you can't like this is really hard for a player to understand literally mid round, especially a seasoned player like Scream. Like I'm not trying to take away anything. That one's good, but I don't think it works very well when you're already crunched on time. They already they're hitting the site with 
17 seconds. Like 17 seconds is when the first player comes through. And they're really pressed. They need to get on site. And they can't take it slow at that point anymore. And they allow the rotate. I like how Gambit throws in these aggressive plays. Um, you're going to notice like they're not... They use this wall. It kind of doubles as like a retake wall. So essentially when you come and for example, they give up A, right? So they're going to double up here. So they'll keep showers. You throw this wall up, you can cross back out to site and help your teammates retake. A lot of the big issue is that if, let's say Liquid, yeah, right here, they throw these two smokes, the, like the left side uh, right side truck and the uh, right side triple. The, these two smokes cut off the site in half. This allows you to kind of sneak back. If this wall wasn't here, you would have to fight any of the truck players trying to come out. And this also kind of makes it not very um, fun, I'll say, for the liquid players who are trying to take the a site to kind of try to clear showers. Yeah, I feel like you just cut ultimate usage. Um, yeah, being down 3v5, I think you just cut ultimate usage um, until you get a pick. See, what happens is like, all right, so the difference is like you wait until you get a pick before you commit ults. So it's 3v5. This is essentially, if you were to picture it, kind of a lost round. You would think of like if you start any game around, any, any round off 3v5, you'd be like, this is a lost round. But if you get a kill and it's a 4v3, then you have an equalizer and then you have the brim ult to push it to an adv advantageous state. I think they have three here. They just probably actively look for fights. They, um, Cryptics is coming back. I think Cryptic should continue lurking and trying to take get a fight somewhere. Um, having three players here now they're forced. They can't. They have to go B. They they can't rotate back A. They have like I guess they have a cam here, but like you you've given up so much map control. It's 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 kind. You're kind of you need to go B now. I think someone just makes a like you guys just make a. Gambly play, push through a smoke, um, and you see what happens. Because, play, yeah, I think this is a, a waste of ult. Like, a Link hits with an ult backside, and no one's caught in it. Thawed out by utility. Yeah, because they these ults don't really help him get any get them any kills. Yeah, and the worst part is they're using these ults. This would be a good hit if they had hookah control. Because then they can watch anyone run out. Anyone backside would just run through CT. Run back CT spawn. They nade Cubby, great. They ult this left side of sight, great. But can't punish anybody. Nats is still in hookah. They have full hookah control. Red Guard just backs up into CT spawn and he's fine. And they get stalled out. And now they've committed two ults. At three ults because... Uh, uh, Soulcast popping ult. They've committed three ults essentially on a gamble. I think you wait. Yeah, I think the I think the proper call there is to wait to see if you can get a pick before you go and commit literally all your ults. This kind of sets the bad tone for the rest of the rounds. Like you you don't you don't have anything else for the rest of the rounds. Your closest ult is Cryptics or Yempi with knives, and that's I guess that's okay. I think they need. I think Liquid needs to be more aggressive here. Uh, it doesn't really, it doesn't really work out this well because they're already on worse weaponry. They have a guardian, a judge, a specter. Playing default isn't going to win you the round. The moment these smokes go down, you are, you're just a sitting ducks for someone, a heaven player. Any, all these long ranges are going to benefit Gambit from having better weapons. Um, the only kind of, only one who doesn't is Nats, but that's because he's been playing go with the judge but the idea is that while you have the worst weaponry you have to close the distance so that's why soulcast is in a good position he's going to lock down u-haul here with the judge everyone else that's waiting for things to settle down like this isn't a oh we got we have even numbers let's play it slow this is a we have even numbers that's not good enough we need to push the advantage that was a really good fake run by gambit so we're gonna run by they still have three players stacked here and this chronicle here Drones. He doesn't spot screen, but he does spot that there are two players still A. And then that's when the and it even pulls off um cryptics. That's actually a big thing. Cryptics here, yeah, he gets pulled off because of this drone. Drone is usually like a big uh, is a big commitment. One, just think of the price. It's pretty expensive. It's not something you just throw out for no reason. 
Um, you kind of throw it out when you're on the site exec to have like your players follow up behind it. So this is going to pull off the rotate. And then now Link is stuck here alone. He gets his one, but he realistically needs two. And then now with the poison. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to play retake. There's just good trades in terms of gambit. Um, this this could have gone either way. Oh, this wall actually. Oh, that's a actually pretty insane wall. So this wall allows you to lurk up. Through, I'm assuming you throw it from this corner. Uh, short A. And it cuts off. One, it allows your showers players to come through. Um, he walks through pocket. He walks through triple. And... Um, th yeah, this smoke, actually, this is a pretty sick take. The only thing you would ever really need to worry about is U-Haul, um, on the site take. With Nats's Viper ult covering, like, this quarter of site, Pocket technically was already cleared by Nats, but they do flash anyway. They drop the wall, they flash, and then they just need to take it this quarter of site, and you, essentially, when you get this quarter, you can take a double, take a two-player, they dart here. Um, this is a really hard round for Liquid I to feel win. like the issue here is that they're not taking any... They don't have any early info. We're gonna look. They have three players toward the B site, but their only early info lied in Yampi. But once Yampi gets pushed off the angle, they don't have that much. They can see the garden. They don't really know that much. And Yampi's gonna fall deeper. And then with these, they have three on the B site, yet they're all essentially dedicated angles. Normally, when you have three on a site, you're going to want to play slightly more aggressively. That way, you can get no if you need to shift players to the other side that is weaker. In this case, because this is the weaker site, Soulcat's playing default triple and uh, screen playing by U Haul. Allows Nats. Like, if they had showers control, then this wouldn't be. On top of having good, like, coordination, team play, and, like, this cool wall that they do and cool strat, their players are individually playing well. And that's probably attributing to a lot to why Liquid is losing on this map. It looks like all, like, let's talk about the round. Nats has been having insane impact. Shados doing a lot, especially on the defense side. Redgar has had his rounds defending the B side with Nats. Defo, he's been opping and causing that pressure. Just generally having an op is always cause cause pressure. Chronicle has had his rounds too. And getting that, I think it was like a 3k winning like round like 4 or something like okay, that. Okay, so this is how the wall actually looks. That's actually a pretty cool wall. Yeah, but the idea is that the, that spot is probably not... Like, Gambit is willing to spend the time to clear. A team that is rushed won't clear that. But you see Nat's kind of doing this little jiggle. But he's, he's like slowly walking out, counter strafing, then check every single angle, slicing the pie, is what it's called. Um, he's willing to take take that. So we're going to look at comps, and we're going to say that Gambit kind of gives more flexibility with the double controller. Double controller only does, always allows you to do more in terms of the all the whole team. Um, instead of running like, you're running double duelist, that means you're expecting the duelist to do the job. When you're running the controllers, it's different. It allows the whole team to do a better job. So I hope you guys enjoyed my analysis or my thoughts on the game. Uh, part two will come out on the map Icebox. Stay tuned.